Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. This is in Floyd County, Virginia. I'm here in the Appalachian Mountains with a red-tailed hawk. I'm fortunate to have a great friend who's actually a falconer and has this magnificent red-tailed hawk. So today's episode is obviously going to be about red-tailed hawks, their amazing adaptations, their features, how to identify them, and a little bit about the natural history of red-tailed hawks. Stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. But this is the most common hawk in North America. You can find them in Alaska, Canada, uh, Northwest, all across the United States, 50 states. You can find them in Mexico, the uh, Central America, as well as in the Caribbean. In fact, their scientific name is Butio Jamaicanense, and that's because the first red-tailed hawk was seen and identified in Jamaica. <laughs> their wide range is a testament to their adaptability. They're incredibly adaptable to all those different habitats, from fields to the forest edges, to deserts, to islands, to coastal areas. These birds have been able to adapt, even in New York City. They will breed on top of uh, buildings in New York City and hunt in Central Park and other boroughs. Their adaptability is also tied to their adaptability in finding food. Red-tailed hawks are primarily mammal feeders, but they'll also feed on birds, snakes, and even insects, especially when they're young. These are very visible birds, and they're actually the most common bird as well. Not only do they have a wide range, but this is the hawk you're most likely to see. All you need to do is drive down the road, and you're likely to see a hawk perched on the telephone pole, on a tree, or a fence line. These birds were incorrectly known as chicken hawks for a period of time. And uh, someone that had chickens would see a hawk fly over and say, oh, that's a chicken hawk. These birds were also misnamed as chicken hawks, and they also included the Cooper's hawk and the sharp hawk. So a person with chicken coop would look up, see a hawk fly over, and say, hey, that must be a chicken hawk. Referring to them as chicken hawks also helped them to lead to their slaughter. And there were actually bounties on these birds Many states had bounties and considered these birds as a pest and an uh, interference with uh, agriculture and as well as game birds. And they would put bounties up on these birds. In many states, you can see records in the late 1800s and early 1900s where thousands and thousands, up to 20,000 and more of these birds were killed for their bounties. Many of you that are my age might remember the Looney Tune cartoons with Foghorn Leghorn and Henry the Chicken Hawk, which helped perpetuate the myth as hawks needing to be eradicated as chicken killers. One of the things that, however, they discovered after these bounties, no big surprise, the rodent population, mice and rats, started to go up when these birds were eliminated. Hawks have amazing eyesight. They have very forward set eyes. Versus, if you think about a deer whose eyes are on the side, to give them 180-degree vision on both sides to see if a predator is coming. These hawks have binocular vision, which allows them depth perception. Their visual acuity is eight times that of humans. They can see great distance. While they're sitting on perches, they'll look for movement. Red-tailed hawks are more perch hunters than soaring hunters. They'll like to find a high perch and watch for movement and prey. Some scientific studies say that these birds can see up to a mile away. So their vision is really, really amazing. Red-tailed hawks also see in the UV spectrum. So these guys can see colors that we can't see. And it may be useful to help to find, follow urine trails of rodents that have little, make their own little trails through meadows and stuff. And these guys can see things that we can't. If you take a close look at his eyes, you can see that he has eyelids, but he also has a third lid called a nictitating membrane. And the nictitating membrane is a kind of a membrane that he can pull over its eyes 
when it's diving through trees and shrubs and bushes to get its prey to help protect it. He also has a very high brow, which makes him look mean or angry. But that is also another protector. It's super, super important that these birds protect their eyes because their life literally depends on them. If we take a look at his feet, red-tailed hawks have these yellow feet, which is also one of their characteristics, and very sharp and large talons. They may have some of the largest and the sharpest talons of any of these uh, raptorial birds. The talon is sharp as a knife and estimates that it can produce 200 pounds of force per square inch. Now all birds have feet that lock onto their perches and that's to help them lock down so that uh, they won't fall off. But for a predatory bird like this, a red-tailed hawk can lock on its prey and never lose that grip on the organ. Also, with all that power and the sharp knife-like uh, talons, it can penetrate into the organism's body and into its internal organs, leading to a speedy death. Red-tailed hawks will kill with their feet more so than the, their, their mouth. And when they fly in to attack prey, and when they pounce on them, it's always feet first with these powerful legs and these powerful talons. Red-tailed hawks cover a wide range of habitats and a huge area is their home range. But there's many subspecies, and along with that, many color variations that go with the subspecies and their morphs. Their morphs can range from almost a dark black to silver or even white. So there's really wide range to see. Red-tailed hawks get their name, of course, from their red tail. But as you can see here, Thorn doesn't have a red tail because none of the younger ones have the red there and that red will develop over time. Some of the features to identify a red-tailed hawk, including a, a black dark line on the leading edge of the wings, a white bib, a brown belly band, the yellow legs, and of course, when they're older, the red tail. And the tail kind of sticks out. The wings are, are shorter than the tail. You won't see the wings overlapping over the tail. Thank you for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. I hope you enjoyed meeting Thorn, who by the way is a, is a female hawk. And this was one of the hardest episodes I've ever had to shoot because I was so distracted. Because Thorn kept looking at me and listening to what I was said. And she was also, I was moving my hand and she was thinking about jumping onto it. And she was also looked at my bag and thought maybe there might be something interesting in the bag that she might have me to have. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. Check out my playlists. You know, I cover everything from insects to amphibians, reptiles and birds, trees and wildflowers. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.